It's been a while since we have discussion about this, so let's talk about the state of display with Apple Silicon. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you've gone out and purchased an Apple Silicon M1, whether that is in a Mac Mini, MacBook Pro, or MacBook Air, you're going to find out that the performance is really great and that, especially for the portable devices, the battery does last a very long time and you don't really have to worry about charging that often at all, which is fantastic. However, as we talk about on my channel, when it comes to true pro workflow, when you need to link up your computer to an external display and also when you need to calibrate the display, there are some problems that we are encountering with this in Apple Silicon. So what I'm going to do is give you an update as of now to see what issue have been resolved, what have changed with the latest macOS Big Sur release that is 11.2 and just kind of pick it up from there. So let's start out with my test system. As you've seen my videos before, I'm running a Mac Mini, which is the one here, is on M1 processor. It has eight cores, CPU and eight core GPU. And this is an upgraded model. And it also has 16 gigabyte of unified memory. This is pretty much the maximum amount of memory you can put onto the system. One terabyte SSD. And this is currently running Big Sur 11.2. So I've tested the beta and I'm also tested the full version of Big Sur as well. And these are the results that I have found. So with regards to calibration, there's really not a lot of movement in this area yet. I know that companies are actively working on these solutions. For example, X-Rite is actively working on this. BenQ is actively working on solution right now with Palette Master Elements software to calibrate the SMB displays. So you can ask me the questions in the comment as to when the release or the update is going to come. The only answer I'm going to be able to give you is that it will come soon. The best thing that you can do is to subscribe to this channel because the moment those release are out, I'm going to do a video about them and I will share with you what my findings are, how to use them, are there any bugs and things to avoid. So that would be the best way to get the most current information. Again, I do not have a release date on any of those. One other company that I want to mention is Data Color Spider Software. I know that in my comments, some have mentioned that Spider has been updated. I'm not sure, will it run on the Apple M1 Silicon without any issues or not? In my previous test, the Spider was able to run. However, at each different restart or all these subsequent restarts, sometimes the profile would take hold, sometimes it wouldn't. So I'm not sure if that issue still persists or not. If you're running on a Spider device, let me know if you can calibrate successfully on your system. That would be great. So yeah. Now let's move on to display resolution, which I think is one of those issues that we've been running it with a lot. And it's not just the resolution itself, it also has a lot to do with the refresh rate of the display. So these are the tests that I've done and I have revised the chart a little bit. If you'd like to see further details about this chart, I recommend that you pause the video so you can just kind of take in what I have here. Essentially, majority of these displays are BenQ displays. Some of them are hardware calibration, that is the SWU line, and some of them are software calibration only. But this is still part of their Pro line display, the PD lineup. I don't have a lot of displays to really test up, but this is a pretty good sample range that I can show you. All of these displays that are having these resolution issues are generally 4K resolution or above. So these are high resolution displays that are running into issues. My test lab, I have all BenQ displays, but the issue here is not really limited to just BenQ displays. It happens with other brands as well. And that has primarily to do with the type of connector that is being used on the display. For the Thunderbolt, I think Apple is conforming to the standard, which makes everything works well. For USB-C, they have tweaked certain things that makes it not backward compatible with some of the displays that are out there on the market. So right now we're really pending two things, whether Apple is going to release the next Mac OS update that will make the signal thing and the connection issue a backward compatibility issue that is fixed with a software and OS update, or either that the display manufacturers would have to release a firmware update for the display. We're still pending to see what's going to happen. So at this point, the only thing that we can do is exercise patience. But what I can tell you right now is based on the chart, majority of the displays are going to be able to run 4K60 without a lot of issues. The one that I'm running into issues right now with is the SW321C. That is their hardware calibrated display, 32 inch 4K flagship model. And that is running into an issue only when you're using a native Thunderbolt or a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable, or if you're using a USB Type-C to DisplayPort cable, you're still only able to do 4K 30 on that display right now. However, there are solutions to this, as you will see, and you can run 4K 60 without any issues. Native HDMI from the machine would also be one of the solutions as well, depending on the machines that you have. 
Let's also talk about resolution quickly before I go into some of the solutions to get around the display issue. So some of the resolution issues that show up has to do with scaling. And as I'm testing this, I'm finding out that if you use a USB Type-C to, or a Thunderbolt cable natively on both ends, you're going to be able to access a little bit more resolution and more scaling than you were in, um, in other modes. If you also use a USB Type-C to DisplayPort and also a USB Type-C to HDMI dongle, you can then run at more scale resolution. So primarily here, we have the native being selected 3840 by 2160, but you also have another resolution as well that you can use, and that is 3800 by 1692. There is another resolution in between, I think it's 3306, which is not available on both of these when I run my tests on the Mac Mini M1, so it's kind of interesting there. So you may not be able to scale to all the resolutions that you want, but if you're running on native HDMI, what you can see right now is you're literally going from 4K down directly to 2K and there's really nothing in between. So interesting things are happening there with display resolution scaling. I'm not really sure what's really going on here, but what I can tell you and what I think is that it's a function of the OS and just the way how the signal are working over these different ports. We'll see what happens with future releases in beta if this issue is going to get resolved or not. Okay, so some of the solutions to get around this to get 60 hertz refresh rate that you can do is to bring your display resolution down if you're running on the native port to about 2K equivalent. I'm using a program called Switch Res X here, which will give you not only the resolution, but the refresh rate that the computer can do. So you can bring it down to 2K, which I think it's kind of counterintuitive if you're running a 4K screen at 2K, because many times we want to get this because we want the resolution. But that's something that you can certainly do. Another thing that you can do as well, and this is for those of you who have the MacBook Air with M1 or the MacBook Pro with M1, you can certainly try a Thunderbolt dock. I haven't tried this myself. I'm not sure if this is going to work and resolve the issue or not. Chances are it will. If I can get some unit in to do some testing, I will. But um, there's a lot of testing that I have to do at the moment. I may not get around to that. But one of the things though, beside a Thunderbolt dock that I definitely recommend for the portable device user, these are the laptop one, is to get the Apple HDMI USB-C to HDMI dongle. And the reason why is because this will allow you to power your laptop through this dongle. It has an HDMI port and it also has a USB Type-A. This way, because you only have two USB Type-C Thunderbolt ports on those devices, you're not limited all the time and you can still use some other type of connection with this. The thing though is that you can spend less money. So Apple dongle costs around $69. You can spend less money and get a dongle like this, which is a 4K60 dongle from Amazon. This is a uni dongle and it works really well. This dongle is around $10. $10 to $15 can get you a really good dongle that works just fine. The only thing is that you, you lose that port functionality. So if you don't want that, you may want to consider paying a little bit more for the Apple one to wish you would then get that connectivity back. And also, we're not really addressing multiple displays here. I know that some have been using a USB-C to DisplayPort dongle, which works just fine. There are other videos out there. I highly encourage you to check those out if you want to run more than one external display natively on a portable devices. Or for instance, on a Mac Mini, you can really just only run two right now, but you can use those ports to extend display even further. Again, on a Mac Mini, you can use a dock, but because the Mac Mini has native HDMI, I would recommend running native HDMI because that will output full range as well and you won't run into a lot of the issues you're running to. If you want to use a Thunderbolt connection, the best thing that you can do though is probably looking at getting one of these dongles from Apple or the dongle from Amazon, this uni dongle for 10 bucks. And what you can do then is run 4K60 without any issues. So there are ways to get around the problem with regards to 4K30 right now. However, they may not be as ideal as we want them to be. But like I said before, the great thing about the Mac Mini, I've run some testing on there, is that the HDMI output is full range. So there are no truncating of any signals that's coming out on the RGB range. So we are good there. A quick segue right here to talk about resolution and refresh rate. What I found out through my testing is that every time I install a Mac OS update to the system, it doesn't go in and automatically bump up the refresh rate, even though the OS and the display is now capable of showing a higher refresh rate. So what you have to do there is check by doing the following. Go into system preferences. What you want to do there is choose display. And in the very first tab to open up, you see very simple settings right now. 
What you want to do is hold down the Option key on keyboard and click on Scale. This is going to show you all the resolution that you can choose. What you want to do then is click on Show Low Resolution Mode. This is going to give you the refresh rate drop down list. If in this list you can choose 60 Hz, that's perfectly great. That means you can run native 4K 60 on this machine using the type of connection you're using without any issues. If this is only showing 30 Hz, I would try another connection to get 4K 60 or it's an incompatibility with the system, the cable that you're using along with the display to which we have to wait and see the solution, whether that will come via an OS update or a firmware update on the display that is still yet to be seen. Another thing I want to mention too is that there are some issues when you ha are using the M1 machine with multiple displays. So for example, on the Mac Mini M1 here, if I have two display hooked up to this, one using native HDMI and the other one using Thunderbolt, sometimes when the system come back from sleep, you will see that the display is wonky on one of them and is showing a weird resolution or is zoom in weird. This is something that's still persistent on the M1 processor and I've seen this happening on the laptop as well. So on the MacBook, MacBook Air, if you have an external display hookup, when it goes to sleep, when it wakes up, the display resolution doesn't show properly. The simple solution to that is to just disconnect and reconnect the cable. I know it's a slight inconvenience, but that's just something that you can work with for the time being until this gets resolved from Apple. All right, now back to the video. One more thing I want to quickly touch on is the bit depth. I still get some of the questions in my comment. The bit depth out of Mac mini is still 10 bit output. Apple has been really good at this and I've been doing this for years. I have no reason to see why they would go back to 8 bit again. So yes, it is outputting an 8 bit and I verify this with Switch Res X program. So the thing that I would tell you right now is just to be patient. There are solutions, they're coming soon. We don't have one entirely yet. We don't have a full solution to calibrate the display yet. We don't have a full answer yet whether the fix for the 4K30 issue is going to be done via a software or a macOS update or a firmware update on the display. And chances are it could be a combination of both. But like I said before, as soon as this information come out, I will share them with you in an update video as I'm doing now. Anyway, I hope that you find this information helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, in art we trust.